<laughs> I don't guess the I don't guess the rocks at work. Clint here today. Alec here today. Matt, what's up? There it is. We're with Classic Firearms and we're out here now to find out if our guns explode. Or work, I mean guns work. Make well, sure our guns work. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, again, we just put together all of our builds. You guys saw it in the previous episode. You see the out of the box, the high end, the budget friendly. Budget friendly. Budget, budget friendly or yeah. whatever it might be. And we're here today, well, to see how it goes. Let's just go ahead and start with the stag. Let's we'll see if this guy works. All right. I mean, no, no worries here. So. Yeah, stag, dependable American-made product. That's boring. It didn't even mess up. Wow. Wow. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, look at that. that. Hey, anyway, I made some customizations. And speaking of stag, yeah, video anyway, sponsored by Stag. That's right. So again, big shout out to Stag Arms for sponsoring this whole series and providing the Stag, the AR-15 that you see right here. It works. Which it, it works. It yeah, works. I mean, whatever. So now let's uh, like the number one thing you want out of a rifle. That's that's absolutely true. You want, you want to see it? Is everyone gonna stand back away yeah, from I'm, me? I'm, yep. Except I'm for Ryan. Back way I'm, up there. I'm walking yeah. Sorry, Ryan. All right, so let's see what happens here. Twenty says it doesn't. So it works, and my light stayed on. Just uh, go ahead and get get a nice close up of that right there. So. Yeah, thank you. So this actually is a handheld light and it has a clip that interfaces perfectly with the, uh, the M-Lock rail. And then I put a Ranger band on for extra, extra security. Um, but I am noticing I'm, my charging handle pin is uh, starting to walk oh. out <laughs> yeah. a little bit. So uh, that's all right, charging handle. Hey, yeah. you know what? That's easily fixed. Yeah, <laughs> and if I thought handle. if I was gonna have any issues, this would be it. So really, that that's what you thought would be it? Yeah, I mean, I didn't think it was gonna blow up. Yeah, no. But actually, speaking of issues, we uh, we did some pre-filming before this. Yeah, we actually did because before we actually started shooting this episode, we did want to go ahead and get some of these mostly sighted in, and because yeah. their rifles wouldn't work. That that is true. No, well, no, 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 because my rifle worked. I just had to tune the gas block. So yeah. Before you tuned it, it yeah. didn't work. Yeah. So at some point in <laughs> here. You okay. will see phone footage of us making sure Actually, our guns worked. Yeah, well, we can go ahead and cut to that now. So let's go ahead and show Alex trial and error. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, first shots with the uh, budget-friendly build. Um, Clint standing back a little bit just in case <laughs> something uh, goes wrong. So uh, here we go. You got the gas block on tight, right? It's not yeah. it's not moving around on you, is it? No. So after what we found out was a buffer spring issue. Yeah, so at first, I, so I did have some gassing issues. So um, you can see in the footage, it wasn't cycling properly. Sometimes I was getting double feeds. Yeah. Sometimes it would fail to feed. Um, so we took, so one thing that'll help you guys is if you actually have a buddy at the range who can record it in slow-mo, which yes. you might be able to yeah. see from the video, So we diagnosed some of the problems like that. Um, we got back that day. So I did completely take the gas assembly apart and over top of the gas port, you can see where it wasn't completely seated all the way. So put it back on, use some uh, Loctite to hang it in place because I can't dimple it because I can't get any more money spent on this. So I didn't buy a dimple jig, but um, then after that- I, I had one, all I had to do was ask. Yeah, well, that that's, it would have cost me more in my own dignity. <laughs> to, to buy Austin one. Pride Anyways, so then after that we were still having issues. Um, shot it some more. 
I was like, okay, it's not the upper receiver. Mm -hmm. So we switched lowers, it worked fine. I was like, okay, so it must be something buffer spring, buffer tube related, or possibly trigger, because the trigger that's in this Anderson rides pretty high, so I thought maybe it might be, I don't know, doing something weird. Like creating too much friction on the Yeah, board. yeah, exactly. So come to find out, this M4 stock had a rifle length buffer spring, buffer spring yeah. in it. So it was about an inch and a half longer than a standard spring, so that's what was causing it not to cycle. But put a good spring in there and she she works, cuz. Yeah. So, Light stays uh, on, that's... So I, I, we can show you some of the footage now of this guy. By the way, let's just go ahead and preface this. Yeah. <clears throat> I messed up. Let's go ahead and take the first shot. Didn't even go into battery. That's not good. All right, so weird thing is, is that it is, <laughs> it's not going into fully into battery. Uh, so I might have to adjust something with the buffer system, too much tension on the mag. Not sure, let's just go ahead and take a shot and see what happens. Oh boy. Did it eject? Didn't it? Mm -mm. Okay, cool. So I know I need to make some adjustments on the gas block, but good news is it did shoot, didn't blow up, so that's cool. Uh, but let's go ahead. Yeah, it's not going fully into battery there. It's a little pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So we'll just adjust some stuff. Yeah, let's adjust some stuff and try again. When in doubt, add more ballastol. We've got it tuned now, and I think we're all set. Just needed a little bit of a break in and obviously more lubrication. Let's see if we've got this thing set up right now. <laughs> I don't guess the Oh no. I don't guess the rocks at work. <laughs> oh no, bro, what are we gonna do? <laughs> you guys might notice the positioning of my light now is closer to the one two o'clock position where before it was, you know, like three or four o'clock or yeah. closer to five. Okay. Well before I it went to the six o'clock position. <laughs> So, look, man, <laughs> I may have stripped the threads on the mount, okay? So now my entire rifle setup is like, you know, $6,600 instead of $6,400, or I don't think the mount's 200 bucks, but I don't, yeah. I don't remember. But uh, anyway, I stripped the threads, and I figured, well, maybe if I just throw some rock set on there, it'd be good enough. Which I will take partial blame for, because we did throw a lot of rock set on that. <laughs> I was like, God, you just pump it in there. It'll yeah, be all right. It'll be, it'll be all right. Just yeah. replace the screws or the replace the mount later or the uh, entire body. Peak to the was plenty. That's my logic for everything. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, no, it was the body to the flashlight. Yeah. And new mount springs because I, like I said, I, I just was like, ah, but that that guy's not going anywhere. That's what. And I, then like, all of a sudden, a it, couple Marines do together. They just you know strip it out, whatever, rocks it in place. Hey, look, dude, it, it didn't work. It did not. I found work. out. Anyway, after getting it tuned. I think this guy runs pretty well. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Let's just make sure. And I don't know about you guys, but as far as recoil impulse goes, I think we all need to like switch our guns too. Everybody try each other's guns, you know? Yeah. A little round robin. Yeah. Oh, this. This is a light recoiling little guy. Yeah, I mean, dude, all of those, I, I'm not gonna want to separate with this gun. I can already throw that out. There. Well, both of y'all have shown off your lights and the problems you've had. I want to point out that I did keep my word, and uh, there is a zip tie keeping my my light wire out of the way. Yep. So you know, we had mentioned that in a previous video. You were gonna go with Velcro, I so see you went with Ranger Band anyway. Yeah, I had the Velcro on there, and then once my flashlight fell off, <laughs> I was like, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna go with the Ranger Band, because as far as cable management goes, it's just easy. Yeah. Uh, the Velcro is, is fine, I didn't have any issues with it, but I just had another one of these laying around, decided to go with that, because, well, whatever. Or you I, could just not have cables. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, will say, this is, not optimal. So well, I but have it talked, works. I've talked to several people. Uh, one one law enforcement officer, primarily, mm -hmm. he hates pressure pads and cables. Yeah, he says they always fail on him. They always get snagged on something. And I think personally, I was just like, well, better cable management, bro. Yeah. But he says no. I just rock the flashlight on my dominant side, or not my dominant side, but the left side. Yeah. yeah, and then just you know, so that way I can just hit the button right there. And I'm like, okay, cool. That makes sense. To each yeah. their own. Me. I don't know, dude. I like pressure pads. That's why I went with them. And I needed to up the price on this. So, <laughs> so there you have it. All right, let's go ahead and switch off rifles and let's just uh, run a mag through each of ours and hopefully they continue to work. I'm 
We're not too worried about the stag. Yeah. <laughs> All right, got the stag Matt's gun here. Let's just see how this guy feels. Well, oh, target's down. It feels great. Matt, you need to sight in your optic and get it set up for a correct handed shooter. Other than that, what more could you ask for? It's the Stag 15. All right, we got, <laughs> we got Alex build up here. Oh, your pin is falling. All right, let's just, there we go. So it's definitely set up for a uh, left handed shooter. Let's see this guy roll. It went click. Let's keep going. So I'm thinking that that one that didn't feed may have just been a, I don't know. I don't know what that was, but so, it fed the rest of them. Yeah, yeah I'm noticing it, it still is, sorry, I'll hop in here. So it is still having, this is long handed. It's still having issues with 30 round mags. So yeah. fully loaded 30 round mags. So I've been loading them to uh, to like 25 to give myself an advantage, but you exposed me on camera. So thank you for that. You're, you're welcome. Anyway, as far as how it shoots, it feels fine. It feels good. I, that roll pin's still hanging in by a, by a thread there. But uh, you know, it feels like an AR-15, like she a 5.56 five, gun, it works. All right, cool. All right, let's get Alec in here now and shoot some guns that work. All right, so I'm here with Matt Stag. I think we all know that it works at this point. So uh, this is still quite a bit more expensive than my build. So let's see if it actually shoots that much nicer. So. It has a very nice recoil impulse. I will say that, com especially compared to mine, but. So uh, I will say I am getting a lot of trigger freeze with this too. So I'm excited to shoot your trigger. But see, well, he, he I've got a few more in here, so let me. I in just the way it was. Well, yeah, let me. Uh, that's what are, that's, that's a yeah, I've got fallacy. one left in here. Oh, you got one left? Okay. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Now, first of all, your splits on that trigger, though, that was quick. Whenever you were actually just... Yeah, it's, it, was, it, it feels good. Cool. I'm still trying to feel like where the reset's at. With this one, yeah. it, it's hard because yeah. it's... Well, it's a heavier trigger. Yeah. It's not polished or anything like that. Exactly. You know, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I'm holding a rifle that's more expensive than my car. <laughs> so... Uh, you yeah. know, no offense to my little Nissan, but <laughs> it'll do. Let's see. I think you're gonna love it. <sighs> Let's see what uh, almost seven grand gets you. So. Okay, this is nice. Hmm, okay. Okay. What were so, you humming? Do what? What were you? Hmm, okay. So I, I was not coming off the trigger enough yeah. to reset it. Oh, okay. Because it was too light. Yeah. Oh. Especially compared to those two. Oh. But he's got know, such a such a refined trigger finger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that and I will say I do like the the ambi controls. That's wow. especially being left-handed. That's very nice. So yeah, she works good, cuz. <laughs> I love this Trigicon, dude. It's so nice. All right, let's get Matt up here. All right, so I've decided to start out with uh, Alec's uh, budget build. And Alec, uh, I made sure to only put 25 in here. I downloaded Thanks, a little bit. Don't give, give it give the uh, give it the best possible showing, right? <laughs> it's already too much bias. I mean, so reliably ran with the 25 rounds. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a little rough around the edges, but it works, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what you're really looking for as long as it works, right? Yeah. So with a little bit of break in, something that I found whenever I build my ARs is a couple hundred rounds yeah. break in, all of a sudden it starts to work more yeah, and, and more even, and more. Well, which luckily we haven't had any issues with the stag, which I didn't think we would, but sometimes even out of the box guns, you'll yeah. have issues with like the first 50 to 100. But yeah. 
So, I mean, that's just, that's just how it goes. So we are gonna keep a round count on all these. We're gonna go through all the mags that we shot, of course. And I think we'll have probably a few hundred up, I know. But anyway, let's get you on the, uh, on my guy over here, see what you think of that. Thanks, sir. You grab that thing for me. Ooh, she's all toasty. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely warm. All right. Don't hurt my gun. <laughs> If I could hurt it, then it wasn't uh, doing all that great to begin with, right? You weren't sure about that trigger, though. I swear. Yeah. So, I mean, that's fantastic, actually. That lightweight trigger, I mean, it really was nice. The optic is really fantastic. I like that green reticle. Um, yeah, man. So, so you I like don't know, what is your vote? my vote yeah on, out of the three guns yeah. uh, that one <laughs> right I, i'm just <laughs> i will say i did notice a more um right leaning recoil impulse that's for because me. i've got it timed yeah and i think it's because it's timed yeah. that way which would make sense whereas mine is more kind of up and down and it's a little bit grittier because you have to kind of really pull through the trigger mm -hmm. whereas this one it was pretty much just consistent the whole time mm -hmm. and then with that one it took me a little bit to get used to the trigger but yeah it's definitely pushing a little bit but yeah. i think that's what you intended it to do it is and one of you guys asked why did i time a flash hider in the video i did mention this is also a comp as well so you'll see those ports on the top of the muzzle device and depending on how you have that timed you can actually dictate where the muzzle goes she's smoking a bit yeah she's yeah we she got won. all the, got all these fresh oils and everything you know but uh anyway so that's that's why i've got it timed that way for a right-handed shooter so yeah for you guys it probably isn't going to be as but i will say this good. as a as a frequent AK shooter, the fact that the yeah. brake is going the wrong way doesn't feel anywhere near as much <laughs> strongly as when you have that slant brake kicked off to yep. the right. Uh, yep. the and, and a few of you guys probably saw me playing with the uh, the sling here. It's set up for a wrong-handed shooter. Um, so I'll just give that back to you. All right. I'll, take, I'll take my baby back. It's funny, I let it dangle because I was like, oh, it's not going to work, but I forgot Matt's left hand. Like, <laughs> so right. I should have put it back on. Yeah, so anyway, now, as far as recoil impulse goes, uh, you guys can take a look at this quick little video. I shot five rounds through each gun, and we're gonna slow down the footage and everything and stack them on top of each other for everybody to see. Uh, what were your guys' thoughts? Do you think that weight of gun, muzzle device, I, ca I can't say do you think that, because obviously it does, but as far as out of the box versus, or excuse me, budget build versus out of the box versus this, uh, what were your thoughts on recoil impulse? So I, I definitely think that the stag was super comfortable to shoot. Um, I was a little surprised because you know your gun actually feels like it weighs less than my gun. Yeah. But I didn't really feel like that translated to enhanced recoil. Okay. Um, then again, we are only shooting 556 and not a real man's caliber, so this guy. For me, <laughs> I will say with this, just because I've shot this quite a bit trying to get it to actually work. Mm -hmm. um, so I was used to this. I jumped over to the stag. The stag's a lot more consistent as far as the recoil impulse or the recoil impulse goes, because like obviously the rifle was designed to function a certain way. Yeah. Um, and that's how it's been tested from the factory. Whereas if you're doing your own build, there's some stuff that you kind of got to work through. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or is something like this too? Like everything on your gun can be fixed and timed and yeah. regulated. I mean, you've got an you adjustable know, buffer, yeah, adjustable, adjustable gas, gas lock, and everything you else. You can time the yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so like I said, other than the shifting of the bit from the brake, I mean, this obviously had the flattest recoil. So one thing I did notice is that you know your rifle and my rifle have uh, rubber butt pads, yep. as opposed to that one has nothing. Yeah, and yeah, it's just a standard M4 stock, just plastic. Yeah, yeah it's checkered. It definitely slips off a lot. Yeah. Um, and another thing, like I love the B5 stock, and even yours has a nice kind of cheek rest. Right. You know, you kind of get that. This is just so it's old not so school, much I feel like I guess. It reduced recoil, but it did help it stick in one spot. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I can see that. And also too, uh, another thing we can talk about are the slings. Yeah. So the Warrior Poet Society sling, uh, this guy, we're going to find out in the next episode just how effective Jedi. our slings are. Yeah. Yep. Um, but one thing I can say is this thing keeps it nice and snug to my body. So you'll notice I've got tension here, mm -hmm. right? And so if I really come down on this guy, it's got enough tension. But is that going to translate well to if I need to go to... <laughs> weak shoulder or whatnot. I think I need to actually practice with it uh, first, so we'll catch that on video in the next episode. Uh, you've got the McLean core sling. Yeah, and so the cool thing about this one is it kind of transforms into a 
two point sling for carrying, so you can see that, boom, that administrative nice mode. And, yeah. Nice and high, it's away from sensitive areas. <laughs> uh, but you know, when you want to shoot it, it's really easy. You got this nice little pull tab you can just pull, and then you can come up. So, yeah, it's easy a great enough. sling. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm rocking the Sylvan Arm sling. Uh, one thing I will say is nice about it is it does have the covered kind of clip hooks, which is nice, which kind of helps it not come off. The, it is a lot looser than your sling is. Like this is as tight as it gets. Mm. So there's a lot of play here. So I can't really push the gun out and lean into it because there's a lot more room. We could also extend that stock. Yeah, I could a little so bit. Close. I like to run mine super close in, which is a personal preference thing. It but is, if but... I do need to come over to do some non strong hand shooting, like I do have the room to do that because it is a little bit looser. Yeah. But one thing I noticed on both of y'all's is you have a tab to actually adjust it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is just a, you know, plastic kind of slider clip type deal. Does yours have one? No, it's just the Jedi buckle. Oh, okay, Jedi. I thought yours had one. So yeah, yeah. so the McLean Core oh, okay. has the tab, which is kind of similar to like the Vickers style slings and things like that, which have the, or like the Savvy Sniper slings or whatever, so you can run it up and down. Whereas this, you can't really adjust it on the fly, which is not the end of the world. I mean, it's a sling, it keeps the firearm to your body, which is its intended purpose, so. <laughs> you having issues over there with your your force buckle he failed the force yeah you know, it's, it's not so strong like thing. i said uh i obviously need to practice with this some more it's supposed to just clip right in and where's the logo so there's the logo i don't know what i'm doing wrong here is it upside down no dude it's the force i don't know how to use the force <laughs> there you go there you it go it was upside down okay all right i'm just an idiot anyway okay so obviously training that's the next episode yeah we all need it I especially, if I can't figure I, out my I slang. especially, I'm all against two Marines, like. And you're an AK guy. What is he doing here? I don't know. Okay, anyway. <laughs> all right, so we'll I'm leave Joe it. I'm comment man here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it off there, all right? So comment down below. How do you guys think this is going so far? Do you think with a couple more rounds sent down range that we'll see a little bit better reliability yeah. out of your gun? I think we will, personally. Yeah. Um, it did take a little bit of playing to get this finally tuned right so it would cycle correctly and all. I am going to try to run it suppressed and we're also going to try this SD Raptor Radian yeah. uh, charging handle to see if it actually does much as far as gas back to the face while being suppressed. And, uh, and I did nothing to my rifle. It came running just fine out of the box. Uh, I personalized it slightly with one replacement part. Well, you can't argue that. And so. a zip tie. And a zip tie. Yep, don't forget the zip tie. Oh, yeah. But anyway, we'll leave it off there. Hey, just want to remind you guys too, again, big shout out to our sponsor for this series, Stag. Ooh. Thank you guys for making a quality rifle that does work right out of the box. You Unlock can some of ours. I mean, it works. Yeah. Just, we're getting there. You know, crawl, walk, run. We're yeah, getting there. Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you're seeing these guns, you're like, man, these things are pretty cool for the most part, and you would really enjoy taking one of these home, just stay till the end of the series. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and get your entries in on a piston-driven AR. It is the MR556 by HK. We do have an EOTech and magnifier on this guy because why the heck not? And if you've ever shot one of these, you're gonna fall in love with it, and then you're going to really, really hate to see how much it costs yeah. for a AR, but uh, but it's not a problem for the winner. That's right, because it's at no cost to you. Anyway, utilize the code word you see at the bottom of the screen right now. And as always, guys, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com. <laughs>